pink. Yeah, it's probably a little bright. Mm, yeah, it's not bright. Yeah, it's probably a little dull. Mm, yeah. Well, we're off and running this morning. Uh, have high hopes for today, again. <laughs> really motivated to get this project done and start benefiting from it. In case you're just joining us, we're working on the garage electrical project. We've been working on it for several days now. Jump back to the beginning. There's a lot of little details that got us to here, like installing those outlet boxes, pulling wire, sealing boxes. We actually met with an electrician to kind of consult with us, and there was some good things that came out of that. So we made some changes yesterday and kind of improved what we were already doing. So today is kind of rubber to the road day where a lot of these things are gonna get kind of finished, or at least that's my goal. So we set the boxes uh, several days ago because that's kind of where you start in my mind with electrical, uh, and then you pull wire to those boxes. And once you kind of have the layout set, uh, then it's really intuitive about where to put wire. Uh, there's one thing, if you're just joining us, you want to jump back for sure to catch, is the, uh, ch the conversation about drilling holes in the eye joists that make up the upstairs floor framing. That's a big factor in where wire goes. You can't just draw a straight line and, and put wire there. You really have to think about uh, the number of wires that are going through a hole. There's actually a code that limits that or it creates constraints and you have to work within those constraints. So that's what we've been doing. Um, so right now I'm hot knifing. These are ICF uh, forms that are filled with eight inches of concrete. So behind that is actually a concrete wall that has the same amount of foam on the outside. And uh, if you haven't seen that, go ahead, jump back two years ago when we built the, uh, the basement here, or the lower section of the house. Super cool technology. So we can create chases for these wires just using what I call the poor man's hot knife, which is actually a soldering gun that I modified to, to do different things. So we actually hot knife the, the spot for these boxes into the foam and they fit nice and snug and you can control the depth and now we're creating the chase to pull those wires. So I wanna get through this stuff. It's a lot of busy work. It's kind of, uh, it's, it's just a lot of work. It's a big, bigger part of the project. So I'm gonna stay focused on that. Uh, for those of you who've been joining me, I heard from the inspector this morning and he has no issue with us painting that conduit. So that's out there drying right now. We'll kind of keep an eye on that throughout the day. Once that's painted, we can of course get it installed and get wire pulled through again. That's the problem with getting ahead of yourselves, double work. And then we can get the outlets hooked up. So hopefully, hopefully by the time we have to call it quits today, we'll have outlets in all of these guys and we'll have wire between them all so they'll all be daisy chained together. And then I'm wanting to do the same thing up here in the ceiling. We've got all these boxes you see with the pigtails hanging down. Those are actually gonna be outlets. And these lights have a cord that's going to plug into them. Um, the reasoning behind that, if you want to know, jump back. We talked about that in a previous video working on this project. Um, so I'm hoping to kind of clean up all these dangling messes today and actually get them terminated into something. And that'll help me to kind of finalize the wire poles and start getting things cut to length 
and tidying up up here. And then if we get that far, we'll start working on securing all this wire. There's a lot of uh, things that we need to do there. There's a code for all that stuff too. Um, so we need to make sure that we're compliant with that. Um, I think it just makes good sense. Uh, I, I say compliant, I say the inspector's okay with, but I think the people who know us, who've been watching our channel, uh, we care a lot about building our house well. And so we lean on inspectors and, and electrical code and things like that for guidance, not because we're uh, obedient people, <laughs> probably far from the truth, but we want, we, we, need, we need something to, to work with here. And so we're leaning on the electrical code and a lot of it just makes darn good sense. All right. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to keep rocking on this wire and then hopefully we'll start moving on to something else soon. I was flying along and was about ready to start pulling wire into the, these outlets like I wanted to do and then it dawned on me I should probably wait. I was thinking that the distance between these is about four feet plus a foot rise and then you need at least probably six inches out of the box which means I need seven feet, seven, 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 seven. You get the idea. Well, I could pull that off the reel, right? but there's a good chance that some of the pigtails and the home runs and stuff that I have may yield a seven foot just because I was really generous when I set the home runs in case I just, you know, thought of something else or whatever. So I'm actually going to stop right here um, in the interest of not wasting wire and I'll pick this back up after I've landed some of the home runs and kind of tidied up some of all this chaos. Once we kind of get this stuff all secured and, and outlets in here and all that stuff, we'll kind of know where we're at with wire and maybe we'll have some just leftovers that we can use to finish those outlets. My family gopher went to get some more spray paint. I ran out right at the end. 
<laughs> so typical, right? Uh, so I'm waiting to put the conduits back on and get that wire pulled in and get those outlets actually wired up. That'll yield some wire right there. So while she's off getting that spray paint, um, I'm just gonna put my head down and get a bunch more hot knifing done. We've got outlets here on the north wall that need to be hot knifed up. And then we've got some on the west wall, excuse me, the east wall. That one's a head scratcher because we have cabinets and refrigerator against that wall and those are gonna have to come out. So that's gonna be fairly time consuming. I'll probably pick this video back up after I've got a bunch of this busy work done. While I'm standing here, I guess I might share a couple of things really quick. We talked about this in a previous video, but but this little piece of wood is actually a spacer for the sheetrock. And then the plan is to put three quarter inch uh, plywood outside of the sheetrock so that we can fasten things to the walls. There are studs, you can see the plastic studs inside the ICF. And so we could fasten to those, but we really want that kind of like put a screw anywhere you want uh, feel. So that's what those spacers are for. And of course I need something to secure the box to so we can pull wire into it. And then one more small detail that I think is worth sharing for those people who are kind of learning a little bit from these videos. This uh, electrical chase is an inch and a quarter deep. I mean, it's not uh, perfectly an inch and a quarter, but the foam is a total of two inches, but we need to be an inch and a quarter deep so that where there are studs, for example, we don't have to nail plate this. A nail plate would be required if we were closer to the surface than an inch and a quarter. This nail plate is obviously for the plumbing here, but there's actually, uh, it's not in the electrical code or the plumbing code, I don't think, but it's actually in the residential building code, the IRBC, that says that on a non-structural member, you're allowed to drill within seven eighths, I think it is, from the face of a stud. So you could hypothetically put this one inch hole, you know, anywhere in this big area, you know, whatever you need to do. Uh, but the problem is obviously that if you get too close to the surface and, and your, your lovely significant other decides to put her beautiful um, live, laugh, love sign right here and shoots a screw in there and punctures your plumbing, you've got a major problem. So the same thing with plumbing, if you're within an inch and a quarter, I think it is, of the face of a stud, you have to nail plate. And so unfortunately, we've got quite a number of nail plates. A, they're expensive, they're time consuming, and um, if you can, just to avoid another step, just don't. When we first did the other wall back in the winter, if you haven't seen those, jump back. Uh, I was worried that we were gonna have to nail plate this whole stinking chase. I mean, my gosh, that would be insane, like a sheet of sheet metal or something ridiculous. Um, but as long as we get that wire, and it's really important that that wire lay flat. Uh, let me show you guys. So we want the flat side in there. If you can kind of see this is turned to the skinny side, we really want that turned so it's flat like that. And when we get around to securing this wire, which we're gonna do into the concrete, we'll try to get that wire turned flat so that it's as deep as it can be because this when it turned like that, it's, it's actually sticking out a half an inch, if you will. So there's actually only three quarters of an inch of foam there and that's not at all what we want. Okay, back to work. Poor man's hot knife is giving me a workout. <clears throat> All right, hot knifing is done. D-U-N done. We're over here to this box and the end. And this is our uh, easternly wall, east, east, eastern wall, the wall in the east. Um, hot knifing done. Looks like the gopher brought us some spray paint. Oh, really? What is with my luck and paint, man? 
I can't catch a break. Unreal. What is this garbage? What is this? Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Bill. What are you doing? Aren't you roasting? How are you not roasting, dude? It's like a hundred billion degrees out here. Yeah, practically live on the sun. Come here. Come here. I can't pet you behind me. I have to pet you in front of me. Yeah, come on. Come here. It's cooler in here, you silly goose. Yeah. You don't have to go be out in the 100 degree sun. Yeah. That's how we got. That's how we got. That's how we got. Huh. Boogafish. Are you happy, cat? Boogafish. Look at this, guys. What is my luck with paint? Does everybody else have the same horrible experience with paint or what? What is this garbage? Man. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna lose it. to sand down the conduit because of all that big chunky paint that's that got all over it so I had to sand it sand it not down but sand it to remove it and then put another coat of paint on it so it's not ready yet so I'm gonna switch tasks again um, I think I'm just gonna focus on getting the wire secured so like this droopy wire right here it's gonna hang down um, work on getting all of these laterals all secured up to the joists and then I'll probably start working on getting these outlets in these pigtails that are sticking down. That'll kind of tidy that up and get those things secure. I mean, that's probably gonna give me at least an hour of work to do, probably minimum. Um, that'll give me time to let the paint dry. Uh, man, it's happening again, guys. Like, I'm not getting as far as I wanted today. Um, but we'll just keep pushing through and we'll just see if we can get at least to a great stopping point to start tomorrow.
Well, everything's just kind of out of out of whack today, but I've been very busy all day long and making tons of progress. I got a couple of outlets in the ceiling. Um, I was just kind of doing busy work until these conduits were dry. Um, I'd like to go ahead and get those installed, you know, get the brackets in, um, and then get the wire pulled through and get the GFI outlet installed. Um, the back one's gonna be challenging because it actually has a lead going in and a lead going out, which means it's gonna be snug in that conduit. And then I think that's gonna do it for today. I'm beat. I feel like I've moved that stinking ladder <laughs> about 10,000 times in this garage. And I'm not exactly doing it in an open floor. I mean, we do live here and all, so um, quite chaotic. Otherwise, I would say it's been a very productive day. Got a lot of the wire tied up and secured, uh, meeting code there every four and a half feet or less. So that's all done. Um, got started on getting these pigtails done. I think I'm just gonna hold off on doing that because uh, you know what, there's a lot of them and it's just another day's work. So let's get this stuff pulled through the conduit, get these GFIs done, and then I think it's dinner time. Definitely like the gray way more than the metally conduity look. Ah! I just realized I forgot to put the connector at the top right there well I guess I know where I'll be starting tomorrow <laughs> 